So today's topic is a half-life of a drug. As you know, there are two main areas of study in pharmacology, pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. Pharmacodynamics represents the area in which we study how the drugs affect our body or the actions of the drug in the body. For example, drug receptor interactions. Now, pharmacokinetics represents the way body acts on a drug or the way the body affects the drug, including things like absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of the drugs. So when we talk about the half-life, we basically talk about a pharmacokinetic parameter and T half is the symbol that everyone recognizes that means half-life. So whatever the root of drug administration is, whether enteral or parenteral, the whole point is that the drug gets to the systemic circulation, which is called the bioavailability of the drug. And the optimal bioavailability or the plasma concentration of the drug is required in order to achieve an optimal pharmacodynamic effect. In case of enteral root, the drug enters the GIT first, from where it is then diffused into the blood circulation. Some drugs need to be broken down or metabolized chemically or changed in the liver before being sent to the kidneys. Consequently, the drug will reach the kidneys, as I said, and will eventually be eliminated via urine. So the half-life is an important aspect to study about the drugs because it tells you the time course of the drug in the body. It is important to know how long a drug will take to work in the body and how long they are going to be around in the body and thus it gives us a clue about the dosing of a drug. So half-life is defined as the time required by the drug in the body or its plasma concentration to fall by half. We will see that later on. Another point we will shortly be discussing is the first order elimination kinetics. But before that, let's jump straight into the graph and see how a half-life curve looks like. So let's have a look at the graph. On x-axis there is time and on y-axis there is plasma concentration of the drug and percentage so the x-axis is a time axis let's say in hours 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 hours up here this is the plasma concentration of the drug and this is our curve so before going further let me introduce you to the term bioavailability again so bioavailability is the fraction of the drug that reaches the plasma in an unchanged form and in this example we are going to discuss a case in which the drug is given by IV bolus or by a direct IV injection which means the plasma concentration of the drug will increase very rapidly so in case of an IV injection if 100 milligram of a drug is given we assume that 100 percent of the drug will reach the plasma and in a very short time the drug will achieve 100% concentration in the plasma. Again, half-life is the time required by the drug in the body or the plasma concentration to fall by half. So let's draw and connect lines on the graph. So for example, if the half-life of a drug is one hour and we have given 100 milligram of the drug, therefore when the first hour time is elapsed or passed, there will be 50 milligram of the drug left in the plasma or it will be 50% available in the plasma, which means one half-life is now elapsed 
and we have 50 mg of the drug left. After one more hour or two hours in total, we will have 25 mg or 25% of the drug available in the plasma. So what that means is that during the first half-life period, the body was able to eliminate 50% of the drug. In the second half-life period, it eliminated 25% of the drug. And this brings us to the concept of first-order elimination, which says that first-order elimination kinetics depend on the concentration of the drug. This is the concentration of the drug in which a constant fraction of the drug constant fraction of the drug in the body is eliminated per unit time the majority of the drugs are eliminated in this way so simply first order kinetics means predictable halving of the concentration with each passing time interval so predictable halving of the drug with each passing time interval and that represents the first order kinetics of elimination. Now let's see what happens after three hours or three half lives. So since we only have 25 milligram of the drug left now and the half of that would be 12.5 milligram so we will go down to 12.5 milligram or 12.5 percent which means in the third half life period we are eliminating 12.5 milligram of the drug. So interesting, in first half-life period, we eliminated 50 milligram of the drug. In second half-life period, we eliminated 25 milligram. And third half-life, 12.5 milligram were eliminated because the rate of elimination of a drug is observing first-order kinetics, i.e. A constant fraction of the drug in the body is eliminated per unit time and this is the predictable halving of the concentration with each passing time interval now the drug concentration as you can see is progressively going down unless there is no drug left in the plasma or the drug is almost completely cleared which is the drug clearance or we can say there are repeated half-lives until the drug is completely eliminated. And what we normally say is that the drug is generally almost or nearly completely eliminated after five half-lives. So theoretically we can say that by the time we get here to the five hours time, we can say that the drug has been eliminated of the body so essentially after five half lives there'll be no drug left.